in Houston. And um, love you both. Oh, we love you too, Charles. Say hi to Charles. Philadelphia, New Jersey. Okay. So you wrote this book about moving to Paris. Why did you, you actually, okay, spoiler alert. Spoiler. You didn't like Paris. I did not like Paris at all. Mm -hmm. Paris was very, very mean to me. Like me? Um, Meaner than me or no? <laughs> equal amounts. Um, but I've come to love this, this city and I've come to know it, I think, rather well. Mm -hmm. So I think when you love and know something, a person or a thing, mm -hmm. you see their imperfections. Okay, or a place. Or a place. Okay. But, okay, so you came to Paris, you didn't like it, um, you worked for, at a bank. Yes, I did. And that sounds, actually my dream is to like work at a bank where you have a break, you sit at a desk and you talk to people all day, then you go to lunch, then you go for drinks after work. Um, no, that wasn't really my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you talked about working in a French office and what were some of the cultural differences? Um, you talk about them in your book. Yes. And it's very astute. Well, I, I like to think so. So what some of the cultural differences, I come from London, where I had fabulous friends. You came from London. I came from I London. Was, <laughs> I'm editing. He that. was the editor on the book. Yeah. He was not telling you that. No. Um, and it was very, very hard to meet people. Yes, very hard to meet especially people. Especially in a professional setting where my experience, again, this is the world according to Jane, mm -hmm. my experience with people here is they respect their private lives. And if they know you in a professional setting, you're not always invited into that private setting. Okay. So yeah. People don't make friends easily, but once you do, you're friends for life. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Oh, I agree. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for joining us. I know, so. that's it. Bye, folks. <laughs> so you ended up owning a cooking school, and we're here at La Cuisine Cooking School. We're right in the middle of Paris, yes. right across the street from the Seine, and you actually are... You just um, rented the space next door to expand. Yes. So how did you come from being a banker um, not to be critical of you, but since we're live, I'm going to do it. Let's you go weren't on. a cook. You weren't a chef. Not a cook, not a chef. Um, you mean you cook. You make dinner. I make food. But, yeah, but you didn't have experience with French pastry, French baking, French cooking. Nothing. And so forth. Nothing. And you didn't speak French either. I did not speak French. I kind of mm -hmm. suggested I did more than I did, but mm -hmm. that's a part of the story. Okay, um, but you opened a cooking school. Opened a cooking school, and my answer for that, I always defer to Elizabeth Gilbert, Big Magic. Okay. And she says in her book that ideas are little energy forms that come to you from the universe. I love that. Because La Cuisine came to me in a uh, New Year's Eve, uh, very boozy, dinner mm -hmm. with friends and we were dreaming about what else we could do with our lives mm -hmm. and I said I wanted to have a cooking school okay like just like that there's just like that okay well I'm still I'm stuck on the Elizabeth Gilbert quote but um because that wasn't my experience um but I need to think about that longer yes cause... so anybody can have this little idea that comes to them and it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to pursue it. Okay, hard to meet people. That's why each country needs a national food society for food lovers. Exactly. Hi from Santa Monica. Hi Santa Monica. Hello. Um, okay, so speaking of French food and French cooking, um, in your book you talk about um, what it was like to have a cooking school and how the challenges you faced. Yes. You had trouble with neighbors? Trouble with neighbors, uh, had trouble designing. What about the trouble you had with neighbors? Because I mean, I would want a cooking school next door to me, but not everybody feels the right. same Right, so the first trouble we had is, if you know Paris space well, you'll know that most bottoms, not a person's bottom, bottom <laughs> of a building, oh, oh, oh. are commercial spaces. And everything above that is residential, so you already have a natural conflict. Everybody on the top wants peace and quiet. Everybody on the bottom wants what they call passage, lots of people coming and going. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's that natural conflict already, and we didn't have the right lease. We did not have the lease that allowed for extraction. Okay, which is the ventilation. Ventilation. Yeah, that's a big issue. So, and people are always surprised when I tell them, you're not supposed to grill in Paris, you can't do all these things. They're like, what, what, what? Um, right. Oh. So, so we have two things that you're going to make today. Yes, be the non-chef. We're, we're going to have I a drink. Have. So, I oh, forgot what I'm grabbing saying. the alcohol and she's grabbing the, the pastries. But she made these little um, tartlet shells, which are so cute. And people that come to her school, they learn how to make these, and you learn how to make macaron or macaroons. Yes. Um, 
My little feet. These are perfect. Did you make these? Of course I did. Okay. <laughs> no, I did not. Well, she has a great team here, and when I used to lead tours, we used to do cooking classes here, and um, I had a really good time. Except the time we all, um, it wasn't because of La Cuisine, but um, we had eaten somewhere, and we weren't feeling good that day, and you were so nice. I remember that. Yeah. I was petrified. Can you imagine a group of clients show up, and they're, they're not feeling well, and they yeah. have got a very big experience in front yeah. of them? Culinary experience. Hello from D.C. Is that Hendrix Gin? No, it's... um. Citadel Gin. This is the first French gin. Um, it's a wonderful gin. It's French. Everything's French. All the, the liquors that we're going to be making the drink with today. Or tonight, wherever you are. So That looks like Lipton Onion Soup Mix Dip. If it were, I would be in love. I made that for a French friend, and she was like, because I was telling her about it over dinner one night, and she was like, it sounds awful. I'm like, no, it's soup mix and sour it's cream. delicious. She didn't like it, so I made it for a party, but all the Americans were at the party, like, descended, and, and now it's like a thing, like, Eater Magazine did, like, the we're renaissance, because of me, no. Okay. Lipton, send me, I need more soup mix, no, don't, I don't need any. So, I'm just going to fill here my pastry bag with my mix. You want me to hold it back? David please? is my Vanna White of the kitchen. She's still around. I know. Wow. Um... Now, me that does not cook fancy, I'll tell you that. I do not cook fancy. I At home. Rarely. If there's an occasion, I'll do it. Oh, okay. Just get it in there. I like things that are easy because after I've been at work all day, if I want to have people over, I need things that I can do really quickly. Um, I love a cocktail dinner, which are small bites. Right. That's a wonderful concept. In France, a cocktail dinatoire or apéro dinatoire yeah. is like a drinks and with snacks and you go to someone's house and it's kind of nice because Jane's shoving me out of the camera here. Um, it's kind of nice because people have little bites and charcuterie and cheese and um, drinks. Um, the thing I don't like is though I like to sit down and have dinner and you don't get to do that. No you don't but yeah. and people all the do more these reason, at like 9 p.m. All the more reason it's the perfect event. Sorry David for the people you don't want to have dinner with. Co okay. <laughs> have a cocktail dinner oh. and um, everybody's standing up, it's social, you're not stuck to anyone. It can kind of peter out. So how'd you have time to write a book and run a cooking school and do all the um, paperwork that's involved in living in France and Well, in so fairness, um, I wrote the book I started the book project mm -hmm. during COVID. Had a little time on my hands. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna oh. pipe this on in. Whoa. Just to make it nice and creamy. Look at that. So you don't have a piping bag at home? Fine, get yourself a Ziploc bag. No need to be precious. You can use a little ice cream scoop. I have those little uh, tiny ice cream scoops that I use for making truffles, like the spring-loaded ones, and they work really well. And when I'm tightening it, She's I'm like, just going to yeah. wind down. I'm okay. listening to you. That's okay. Just to create more tension. You see how easy that is? There's no tension between us. Not at all. It's None. Just... So I'm just going to pipe a few of these. So basically, I just pre-baked off some shells. Okay. If you don't have homemade um, pet brise, get something from the store and you can cut out your little shapes. I just wrote, I'm, I'm, Look at that. I'm, I'm writing a book and I just had a whole thing about not buying store-bought pastry. Okay, so, so sorry. That's okay. That upset that. Do you want me to hold that? I'd that's like okay. you to hold that. So now... I won't be asking you for a quote for my new book. <laughs> <laughs> I did a quote for her book. I'm on you the did. back. I'm on the, no, cover. on the cover. I'm on the cover. <laughs> my name is bigger than hers. No. Um, I said an engaging, multi-layered story of a woman navigating innumerable cultural differences to build a life mm -hmm. in London and create her dream, oh no, Paris, to uh, cre create her dream to establish a French cooking school. I think they David cut out half of it. Because I think I said a few other things. Right. That's okay, they asked me first. They were expletives, so they Ex had to Expletives, expletives, is that, okay. she used to okay. live in London, <laughs> okay. So what's this? So here's my little tart shell. I'm just gonna add on a little Piment d'Espelette for color. This is the one of the only spices made in France. You'll see it everywhere. French chefs are very faithful to this. It's a red, red 
spice. It's made in the Basque region, Piedmont d'Espelette. And then just because more is more, let's drop a few little chives on there. Now, isn't that pretty? I don't think people in France say more is more. No, they don't. Okay. Oh, Probably they look not. so nice. Look at that. Look at that. Very easy. Done. Especially if you use store-bought pastry. But these are, this is fresh pastry. This is fresh pastry. Can I eat one now or should I wait? Go for it. Okay. But take one that's fully dressed. Okay. Are these gluten-free? No, they're not. Mmm. 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 Easy peasy. Mm-hmm. First snack done. Mm. Okay, that's it. Super. Sh shouldn't talk with my mouth for what I'm going to. Um, is that super. Sh so what's the filling? So we got two fillings. Okay. These are for the macaroons because David's gonna help. Okay. I'm gonna move this because this involves a knife. And you can cut the tips off of these. You wanna cut that tip off? Oh. Um. Do you scissors? Well, normally. Okay. Here. Uh, okay. I don't know what the heck is in this kitchen anymore. Okay. Don't you own the place? Okay. <laughs> I okay. spend more time on emails. Feel bad for me. I thought you were going to say on eBay. I think I cut. Okay. Oh. So everything's made in advance. Don't we love that? Oh, thank you, Carrie. And. Filling. Which one? What is this? Okay. so. So this is a creation I made. I don't know what it's gonna come out like, but it's a caramel au beurre salé, and then I had extra cream. So I whipped in some cream and I put it in the fridge to keep it nice and cold. Look at How come they the come technique. out flat? I never use these kind of bags. I always use tips. I just need to get this a little warmed up because I put it in the fridge and this is just a chocolate ganache. I guess so I'll go this way. We just have chocolate. So I think I put too much, okay. That's it, there's no such thing. Okay, so. Well, if, what, she, Betty. What? Geez, she's Your saying where is- are not painted. Well, no, but Betty's like, where is Roman? Where is Roman? I told her- chopped liver. <laughs> my fingernails are not painted. I haven't never painted my fingernails. Okay, so and the tart filling. So how's that? It's beautiful. Okay. What, what flavor are these? Oh, the tart filling. The tart filling, <clears throat> and what I did is I took a boursin like cheese, a boursin like cheese, and then I took some whipped cream and mix, got the whipped cream a bit puffy. Mm -hmm. um, I might have, do I have any left to show you? So I went to a party and somebody brought Boursin and it was here in Paris and I was, I was like, I haven't had this for a long time and it's really good. Um, I have a recipe in my book for like a faux one in my Paris kitchen, but what's that? So this was the cream. It's, it's fallen now because I left it out, but I whipped the cream. This is just plain cream. So we've got about 35% fat in that. Okay. And then I mixed it with the Boursin. Ah. And then I just refrigerated it. But you it. could use goat cheese too. Use goat cheese, you can do so much. <laughs> what can't you do in France? Oh. That's your next book. What can't I do in yeah. France? <laughs> there used to be an expression like everything is possible in France. And I said that to somebody once. You need more. I need a little bit. And um, yeah. they said they never heard that. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that this has come yeah. out really smoothly. You have a lot in here. <laughs> this is what happens, you know what, um, this, oh. Okay. I get to taste it, it's, mm, it's delicious. I'm just gonna cut it bigger, and that way it'll come Okay, out. we'll get, we're gonna get that out come hell or high water. Like I said, I, as a professional, as a food service professional, I use the pastry tips that are polycarbonate. In about 10 minutes, this will be beautiful. So magic kitchen, in your mind. You know, you should put that in the microwave for like 12 seconds. I was just hoping it would like naturally release itself. Hello in Georgia Bay. 
How come the filling is soft from the cold? What filling? Where is Roman? 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 Where's Roman? He's at home. He's mad at me. No. People in the EU don't say more is more. No. We. Hello Hi. in Bernal Heights, San Francisco. San Francisco. Hi, San Francisco. Okay, are these raspberry macaroons? So you should know that most times, there we are. That's nice. Okay. Actually, this one came out good. Most times the shell, mm -hmm. in my experience, does not have a taste. Mm. It's just a color. Mm. And I did put the, there's mm. my gal, my bread gal. Who? Alberta okay. from Canada. She makes beautiful bread. Um, the shells are just a color, mm. and it's usually this is a um, Italian meringue mm -hmm. shell. And you teach people, you have actually more macaroon classes here at La Cuisine. Yeah. Do you find, so for a while, everybody wanted to make macaroons everywhere in America. It was like macaroons, macaroons, macaroons. Then it all kind of, everyone was like, all right, uh, whatever. Um, so you do macaroon classes, are they still popular? I'd say not as popular as croissant. Okay. Everybody wants to make croissants. And you can make croissants in two or three hours here. That's how long the class is. That's how long the class is. You do have to know that croissants do take much longer. Uh, but we I call that filling. Okay, so I put a little too much filling. <laughs> mm. I'm sharing with you. Um, croissants take much longer, but we tried. We mm. reinvented the process, so all of the waiting time you don't have to do. And you talk about in the book too, and also you have French teachers here. Yes, they're all French, or most of them are French. I'm not well, actually now. I can teach you if I'm French. So I, can I leave you my resume? I'll be happy to take it. Wouldn't we love David to do classes and tours? No, I'm actually you were gonna do a tour and you asked me to do one. Yes. And then you you disappeared. Happen. I got ghosted, so that was still nobody happen. wants a tour with me because I just want to eat all the macaroons. Hmm. Did you taste this one? The salted caramel. The croissant class is excellent. Cupcake says. Yay! Oh, and so did Dan Spees. Sorry if I'm not getting your name. Hi, correctly. Making, I hope you're making croissants. It's been since January. And someone, Judith, took the souffle class. Hi, Judith. Fort Lauderdale, Alberta, Chicago. Hi, wow, Jane, Chris. you're up to new things. I try to. So one thing about Jane, too, is she likes a good cocktail. <gasps> <laughs> That's why you moved to France Let's for the cocktails. Let's so what do you have for dinner? And tell, oh yeah, what, and now we're gonna do a little speed round, like okay. three favorite restaurants. Okay. What, what do you have for dinner? What do I have? Frozen pizza? No. No, I do a lot of vegetable medley. Okay. Um, sometimes with a protein. Okay. Like a chicken or a beef. Um, and it's just really simple, something I can throw together quickly. Okay. And three favorite restaurants. Three favorite restaurants. I'm gonna name my first favorite always is Juveniles. Juvenile. <laughs> okay, sorry, I just had to <laughs> Juveniles, it doesn't sound so good in English. I'm English. saying it so that everybody understands. Okay, Juvenile. Juvenile. I love this restaurant. Okay. I love the people. Macaroons. Um, Macaroon. Is David going to teach? I think he should. So no. we started a trend. I'm going to teach Jane how to... How to um, pronounce things. Yeah. Um, I love Juvenile. It's an adorable restaurant. Um, my second place to eat, and I'm not going to say a restaurant would be, make yourself a beautiful picnic from the market, preferably Bastille Market on a Sunday. It's fabulous. I love that. Mm -hmm. My third place. Yeah, we have, we've had oysters there at the market. Yes, we have. Yeah. And that's fine. Did you mention that? And is that the story about me in the book? I didn't. Okay. But I will tell that story. Okay, so I made her cry. He did is make that okay? me cry. Is that a spoiler? He did make me cry. I make women cry. He makes cry. me cry all the time, but this was okay. for a good reason. Um, my third restaurant, and I say this sincerely, is what we call Bistro du Coin, your local neighborhood bistro. They're not written up in the New York Times, they're not in the LA Times or whatever. They're these little neighborhood restaurants, mom and pop, did you, and I've got traffic yeah. agreeing with me, that need to be serviced by um, all of us and not forgotten. 
Mm -hmm. Those are my top three restaurants. Well, it's interesting because I had um, dinner the other night with some friends not too far from here. We didn't have a very good experience. Um, they weren't super nice. Um, it was kind of strange because um, that whole thing about French people not being nice is kind of a stereotype from the past. Um, but they weren't friendly. Mm. And usually, like, places are friendly. But romantically, you know, we don't live in the neighborhood, and this is not a neighborhood where people live. And you wouldn't, like, a neighborhood restaurant wouldn't survive if they weren't nice. Right. Um, and that's what I realized, like, oh, you know, I'm only eating in my neighborhood. Yeah. So service the little restaurants around you. They always need love. We must not forget them. And mm, um, this, I'd love you to taste this. I don't think you've tasted this one, my caramel. Um, I just had like seven macaroons. I spent, because David gave me instructions on what I should do to be prepared That's for That's like call. awfully full. So I spent hours getting everything ready and then he won't eat it. Mmm, mmm. It's a bit salty, but. Mm -hmm. Caramel au beurre salé with, again, a mounted cream whipped in. The only thing about uh, macaroons is they should ideally be refrigerated or sit for 24 hours. Yes. Spoiler, hidden secret, macarons are never sold fresh. Yeah. They have to sit because that's when you get that beautiful, what do you call it, um, connection between the filling and the shell that softens the inside but still keeps your shell nice and beautiful. I love eating. A friend of mine is a chef, she goes, I love eating, I love eating. so do I. So now I think it's cocktail time. Ah, okay. You love Paris and everyone is lovely. Yes, Jane is lovely. No, not all the time. I try yeah. to eat. Hello from Jackson. Any Hi. special things to do at Christmas? Oh, how would you answer that? Um, well, Christmas is a, I get asked that a lot, like right before Christmas, I'm sure you get this too, like we're coming for Christmas, what should we do? Christmas is a very sort of family time in France. It's Absolutely. not like a big commercial thing and everything shuts down. Not, not like it used to be, but um, people spend a lot of times with their families. They don't go out to eat ever. Yeah. And Christmas Eve is the night you spend with your family usually. Christmas Day, more things are open and so forth. So it's not, I always tell people who come that week, they're always like, where should we go? What's gonna be open? I'm like, like you said, I just walk around, find a cafe, have a croque monsieur, have a carafe of red wine. Um, hopefully you have a nice waiter to wait on you and enjoy yourself. Right, somebody asked, what's the difference between macaron, macaron and macaroon? Macaron's the president of France and the other one is a cookie. <laughs> And the macaron is almond and sugar. Right, and uh, macaroons, which have coconut in them, are, um, are macaroons. And I read a story that, um, I think it was like Sephardic Jews or something, um, and I, don't quote me on the story, but they couldn't get almonds, so they started using coconut. Oh. And maybe it was in America. So I'm not a historian, and I shouldn't talk about history live, but I think that's the, 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 the story. What that's we can reason. talk about are the cocktails, because we're that's what we're here for. Okay, someone said, oh, Alberta, my book on cocktails, that's me on the back. And what's funny is I've written nine books, and the only one I ever won an award for is a cocktail book. So everybody write a cocktail book if you want to. And this got me through the holidays oh. for a number of reasons, as you can imagine. So today's, or tonight's drink, because it is Apéro Hour, is called the Fairbanks, and it's a variation on the martini. The martini is a very famous drink. A lot of people think it's just a drink with a big glass of gin with a little bit of vermouth on the side or put the bottle nearby. Um, actually, a martini does need a certain amount of vermouth in it. You can add as little as you want, or as much as you want. There's even a 50-50 martini. And for those of you that like martinis that don't want to drink a lot of alcohol, when you go out, you can have a 50-50 martini and it's half vermouth and half gin. It's delicious. So, we have some French brands. We have Dolan Vermouth, made in France. Excellent. Good and choice. I went there when I was researching. Everything's backwards because we're in selfie, selfie mode. Um, when I was researching drinking French and I met um, the owner, 
and it was wonderful. So family owned, and mo for most of its 130 year history, it's been run by women. Wow. And this is Citadel Gin. It's made by a cognac company called Pierre Ferrand, and I like it a lot. Um, it's, a reasonable, it's a reasonably priced gin. Um, I'm starting to sound like an infomercial, but it's good. And the spoiler in the whole thing is this. Do you know this? I do not. It's a, I'm happy to discover. It's, a, it's called a Noyau de Poissy, which is made from apricot kernels. It's an apricot kernel uh, liqueur. And apparently it's the oldest liqueur made in France that's not tied to a mm. religious order, that's like Chartreuse or Benedict. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's actually made um, not too far from Paris. So we're gonna add a little bit of this to this drink called the Fairbanks. And I learned something, I learned so much when I was writing Drinking Friends. It's good to about writing a book. What did you learn from your book, writing it? Oh, God. Oof. Gosh. Um, I learned a lot about myself, mm -hmm. my comfort zones or not. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot of, you know, sometimes we, we just know things because we're, we've lived here in this little ecosystem and to then try to explain things that you just take for granted every day. Well, somebody told me when you write a memoir, you're cutting open a vein. I was like, ooh. Oh. Okay, but interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, I won't ask you this, but I, I interviewed for a job once at, in San Francisco and this guy had a restaurant. It was really interesting. Um, but the first question he asked everyone, he would say like, who is Jane Birch? And I he would know, like, look at you. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I've never been to me, I don't know. <laughs> so, to make this cocktail, I'm gonna make two. Um, when you make cocktails, a couple things. One is always pour the cheapest liquor in first in case you make a mistake. Um, oh, okay. Then you're not out. Like this is half the price of this. So I'm gonna use this first. Um, and I'm opening a fresh bottle for you. Um, vermouth only lasts like three, four, five weeks once you open it and it should be refrigerated. It's okay. wine, this, this is basically, it's wine based, so it should be refrigerated. Okay. Mmm. It smells really good. It smells wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna make two drinks. So I'm gonna add one and a half ounces of dry vermouth. And Frank Odu, who has Cravon, he said, you know, when you make a cocktail, just use one of these. You don't need to use one of the cocktail uh, mixing glasses. Okay. I was like, all right. Especially when you're on your bike and it's gonna break. So, <laughs> all right. So, I'm using one and a half ounces of Dolan vermouth for, or dry vermouth, dry French vermouth for two drinks. And I'm going to add three ounces of gin for two drinks. And also a bartender in Brooklyn told me, Jeff, if you're watching, hello, Jeff Gali. He said, always hold the bottle with the label out so the customers know that they're getting what they ordered. The, I don't get to see the label. Well, you're not the customer. They are. No. Here, <laughs> I'll leave you the bottle. Here, it matches your dress. Thank you, yeah, I tried okay. to be on brand. And then the secret ingredient is a little bit of this, this eau de noyau, noyau, noyau it's actually a noyau de poissy. Noyau means kernel, uh, like a kernel of olive, kernel of apricots. It's made from apricot kernels. So I'm gonna add four, do you wanna add four teaspoons? Four teaspoons. We'll let her do that. Okay. Can I trust you? Yeah, that's probably two. Where's the refrigerator? Oh, here it is. Wait, but if you're looking for the glasses, you gotta that open is... that door and then down. Whoa, okay. I made a mistake there. Okay, so that was two. So if you're wondering where all the ice is in Paris, it's here at La Cuisine. Four. There was a day not too long ago where trying to get ice in Paris was Oof. impossible. Yeah. And now you can actually go to a grocery store. Yeah, they have it at grocery stores and at Picard. All right. And it's called Sensation. Doesn't that make yeah. us feel fancy? So you want to fill the mixing glass up with about two thirds full of ice. Sorry for the Paris sounds. Yeah. It's a very noisy city. Yes. All right, so 
So I'm gonna have you put that back in the freezer. Are you sure you the yes, please. So I'm gonna mix this up for about 15 seconds. You can actually shake martinis. People say, oh, you're gonna bruise the gin. If you put gin in a bowl and punched it, you would not bruise gin. Like a gin does not bruise. Um, somebody once said to me, well, you're diluting the drink when you do that. And like, well, that's the whole idea of mixing it with ice. You want to dilute the, the drink a little bit to make it drinkable. Uh, whoa. Oh, sorry. I also forgot to put a few dashes of orange bitters in there. Sure. Whoa, you've got four glasses. Well, just in case. Okay. So these are chilled. Another instruction from David mm. was to put them in the freezer. Uh huh. So I did that. You follow instructions. I Remember tried. in school when we had report cards? Oh, and they I were got like Jane follows and so did I. Horrible. I was very naughty. I almost like flunked out of prep school. And then in college, I graduated magna cum laude. Well, I didn't graduate my But now look at me. I'm here with Jane making Maybe drinks in drinks. Paris. Oh, we I've succeeded. I've always gotten in trouble for talking in school, I, and I would not take nap time. Don't I regret that now? I'm doing anything for a nap time. I know. I look at my friend's children who are like three years old. I'm like, oh my God, you have nothing to worry about. You had a bigger drink than I did. Deserved, I think, <laughs> for all the work I've done today. Let's kind of add a twist of orange. Another thing that David said, I had to go out and get fresh, or fresh oranges. So basically I've been slaving away all day. So what you want to do with a cocktail is hold the, the pit, uh, zest like this Outside? Okay. and just squeeze it. So a little bit of the orange peel, orange uh, oils get into the drink. What do you mean squeeze it? Just, just pop it? Yeah. Out. And then my friend Margo uh, from Combat said, taught, taught me this, she's like, do this around the glass so when people touch the glass, they taste the orange. Hello, Margo, if you're watching. Cheers. Should I just go behind the ears? That's no. That's for your drink. Oh. Right here. Whoa, that was behind you. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, everyone. You didn't look me in the eyes. Oh, okay. Come on. So this... I think I just got it all over your arm. Mmm. Doesn't work so well when he's a lot oh, taller. You're supposed to go, mmm. Mm, don't you watch it's food delicious. TV? I People love eat it. things and they go, oh, oh my god, my god oh my god, that's so good. Beautiful. But it's really good. It's a really great cocktail, and that little bit of noyau kind of mm. changes it. If you don't have uh, this liquor de noyau, which is pretty hard to get, I think, outside of France, you can use amaretto, which you might oh. want to use a little less because okay. amaretto can be pretty overwhelming. Do you like it? I love it. Was the dosage good on this? Yes. Okay. Did you make a mistake? I did. Oh. But I added a little bit extra on, on accident. Okay. But I think we're okay this is good. for it. This is good. So for toasting in France, you should know you always have to look in the eyes of the people you're toasting with. But on the other hand, okay, this is my new pet peeve, is people make a big deal about it. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah, don't yeah. stare at them weirdly. Yes, you don't need to do <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, it freaks me out. You look in the eyes. Just look in the eyes. Here. Toast. Cheers. And then take a sip. <laughs> don't put your glass down before you sip. That's yeah, suspicious. Okay. And don't, you also mentioned in your book about drinking wine. It's like, don't pour your own wine at restaurants and at dinner parties. Yes. Even if your glass is empty. That How do you get more wine? If that can be tricky. That's really up for your host mm. or your hostess to see that your glass is empty. If you go, okay, this is a formal setting. If you go to pour your own wine, you're drawing attention to the fact that they did not. So keep that in mind. Okay. I didn't hear that because I was looking at things. Apricot kernels, what is the name of the liqueur? It's called, um, this is backwards and um, it's, it's listed, it's mentioned in my book, Drinking French, but it's called a noyau de poissy liqueur. And there is a amber colored one and a clear one, which is stronger. Ooh, breakfast, breakfast time, time here, right. five o'clock somewhere. Don't forget. Eau de noyau from which noyau? Apricots. Mm. Okay, well, thank you so much well, thank for you. inviting me to La Cuisine. I'm so glad and to have you, and thank you for all of you for being here with us. So if you come to Paris, and I know a lot of 15 million people are on their way here, 
Just now. No, they've already oh. left. They were here for Taylor's concert. Oh. Taylor Swift's concert. Oh. Well, did you see that thing on French News? They were saying it's cheaper for people to fly here and go to the concert yeah. than to go to see it her in America. And I feel really bad, and this is no offense to anybody, but I don't know, like someone played for me a Taylor Swift song, I wouldn't know what it is. I wouldn't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't know. Is that terror? Is that, I feel like I'm missing something. I need to go to the concert. We need to do better, because I'm in the same camp, so I felt a yeah. bit disconnected with trying to yeah. talk Swifty things to people. It's amazing, like she does like 85 concerts in a row, they're like four hours each. I will say like, she's wow. an incredible young woman, just yeah. as such a fabulous performer. The other person that was in town this weekend that I love, if anybody knows her, Mel Robbins. Who's she that? was in town. Mel Robbins is like... Was she in Spice Girls? No. Oh. But that there maybe there is a Mel Mel B. Mel B. No. Yeah. She was in town this weekend. She did not call me, but Who is that? She's just like this fabulous podcaster, just boss woman. I love her. Okay. I'll send you her podcast. Is she Taylor Swift? She's not. Okay. But that's who I got excited about. And I couldn't have that conversation. I love celebrities. A celebrity just reached out to me, um, and she's like a Broadway legend. And my friend, a friend of mine introduced us, and she goes, she makes really good latkes. I was like, so I have to get her to do latkes in my apartment. So Jane's book is called The French Ingredient. It's backwards here because we're in selfie mode, um, but it's available at your local independent bookstore or oh, online. Or online. And it's a memoir um, of her life in Paris. And it's pretty, um, it's quite a read. It's a good summer book to read too. Um, and one thing I liked was that I could read the chapters and then take a break because now we read in shorter yes. um, shorter periods of time. So I love this book and I love Jane very much. If and you come to Paris, um, come to La Cuisine and take a class if you want. Um, who knows, I might be teaching here someday um, if I lose my job writing cookbooks or writing my newsletter or making cocktails. Making mm. cocktails. Mm. Very good, that little bit of almond is it's just delicious. That NYU, I I'd love to delicious. share this with all of you, maybe when you come to Paris. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm glad you tuned in and got to meet Jane, my good friend. Um, check out her book, The French Ingredient. And don't forget, drinking French. Oh, you can order them at the same time. To maybe get you, you get a discount. Yeah. every evening of your life. It got us through COVID. It got us through COVID. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye, everyone. All right. Oh, we had a lot of people. Okay, I'm gonna. This is delicious, David. It's strong though, isn't it? Oh, okay. okay. So, oh. Okay, I'll be. Stop.